of a goddess. Well, follow me. This is Umbilicus Rupestris, Venus's navel. Now you have seen the navel of a goddess. Why navel of Venus? Well, because the shape of the leaf is like a navel. You see, it goes in, in the middle. Just like a navel. <laughs> and why Venus's navel? Well, because you know Venus was the Roman goddess of love and seduction. Well, apparently, Umbilicus rupestris was used as an ingredient in love potion recipes. The same goes for the Latin name Umbilicus rupestris. Umbilicus in Latin literally means navel and rupestris comes from the Latin rupes, which means wall. And you can understand why. Because umbilicus rupestris loves stone walls. Because they're aerated, they got just a bit of soil, just the right amount of moisture and humidity, and they're hidden from the sun. A stone wall in the sun, you won't find any umbilicus rupestris. If it's in the shade, in the stone wall, Maybe with a fern here, as plenum sederac, a bit of moss. That's where you'll find it. So if you want to see Venus's navel, grab yourself a stone wall. <laughs> Now, what's great about Umbilicus rupestris is that it's a great wild edible. It's delicious. And also, it's available in winter. So it pops his little head out in the autumn and it stays all throughout the winter. So this is a great winter vegetable. So, you can eat Umbilicus rupestris fresh off the wall. Just make sure that you wash the leaf you're about to eat if you're eating it fresh off the wall because you never know what's on it. Always best to be safe, eh? And if you're at home and you've, that you've harvested them, just wash them in the sink and there you go, you're good to go. Mm. Mm. Otherwise, you can use Venus's navel in salad or juices, or apparently they're great pickled in vinegar. Mm. I like to try that. I'm gonna try it soon. Mm. So good. Mm. Mm, it tastes like a cucumber. Some people say that it tastes like peas, but I really find it's more like a cucumber. <laughs> mm. Muy buenísimo. Muy bonito. Mm. Me encanta. Me encanta. And you pickle them in vinegar to preserve the flavor and texture. And usually people don't cook umbilicus rupestris because it loses its flavor and its texture. And that's what's great about it. Now, Venus's navel has a juicy texture because it's a succulent plant. Now, a succulent plant is a plant that has thick, fleshy parts that are adapted to store a lot of water. So, it's really fresh, got a lot of water in it, and it's got that sweet flavor, just like a cucumber. Mmm. I adore it. Wow. Mmm. Not a plant that you'd expect to find on walls. <laughs> so yummy. Mm. Who knew? Mm. 
Umbilicus rupestris is rich in vitamin A and minerals. Medicinally, it's used as a diuretic, which means it increases urine flow. It's also a cologogue, which means that it clears away the quantity of bile from the gallbladder. And finally, it's vulnerary and analgesic, which means that it heals wounds and it relieves pain. Venus's navel can be a great natural plaster. You see, if you happen to hurt yourself, you know, you fall down, you have a wound. Well, if by chance you have umbilicus rupestris right next to you. So if you do hurt yourself, do it next to a stone wall. <laughs> then you'll have a natural plaster. No, anyway, bad joke. Sorry. <laughs> so all you need to do is take a leaf and then you get rid of the lower cuticle. Now, by the way, the cuticle is the thin layer that protects the epidermis of the leaf. So you take that off, you strip it off. It's, it's transparent, it's transparent film. And then you simply apply, well, the leaf, which is the green part on your wound. And normally it should stick without any problem. It sticks pretty easily. I uh, tried it on one of my um, mosquito bites the other day and it worked really well. It just calmed the mosquito bite a lot. So it's really helpful. So if you ever need that, make sure it's clean. Also wash it before you use it. So there you go, just pop it on your wound and you have yourself a natural free plaster. Now, most importantly, can you confuse it with another plant? Does Umbilicus rupestris, a delicious edible plant, resemble another plant, but that's toxic? Well, yes. And I want to show you something. Let's do a test. Let me take you off. Here we go. Now, you're going to tell me, does this plant look like this plant? Or this one? Now, would you mistake these? Would you mistake this one with this one? Because if the answer is yes, well, they're not the same plant. <laughs> this is Arisarum vulgare, a very toxic plant. <laughs> and this here is Umbilicus rupestris. So you see, they're pretty close to each other. They both grow on a wall, same environment, same habitat. Okay, sometimes you'll have umbilicus rupestris high up on the wall. But if you have it down here, you could really easily confuse it with this. Arisarum vulgari. Now I say Arisarum vulgari, but there's also Arum italicum that looks the same than Arisarum vulgare. Therefore, it looks the same than Umbilicus rubestris. And as I showed you, they both can grow near walls. Well, Arisarum vulgare will grow next to a wall, not inside the wall. So that's already a first pointer. And wait, let me get you one. So let's compare the two because this is a very important point to make. So here we have Umbilicus rubestris and Arisarum vulgare. And so, you can see that already Umbilicus rupestris is very rounded and it's really in the center that it goes in. Whereas Arisarum vulgare goes in kind of at the bottom. And then you have these two characteristic lobes that Umbilicus rupestris doesn't have. And you also have the veins that are more marked. You'll see them more marked, especially on Arum italicum, always has more marked veins. Whereas Umbilicus rupestris, not really. And it's kind of indented. It's, an ind it's got indentation. You can see that Arisarum vulgare is completely straight here. So, no indentations. So it's very important not to make this mistake. It's a deadly mistake. You don't want to make it. And maybe just seeing them close up next to each other you think to yourself, oh, I'll never confuse those two. Well, from afar, if you're unfamiliar with wild plants, you could really tell them apart. I've been on walks with my family and they've literally asked me if that was Venus's navel pointing at an Arisarum vulgari. 
So, when I'm telling you that people do confuse them, they do confuse them. So don't make that mistake, okay? Umbilicus rupestris, Venus's navel. Really fun plant, it's got a great name. It's edible, it's delicious, it's medicinal, yet it's surprisingly unknown, which I don't understand. Because you can find it in most of Europe, you can also find it in North Africa, uh, places like Turkey, Libya, those kind of places, the Mediterranean, of course. Uh, I love this plant. I find it delicious, especially in salads, incredible. And it really has a sort of cleansing action on the body, which I find amazing. So there you go. I'm sorry about those sheep. They're so loud. They literally put them here a few days ago next to the torrent is right next to me. So they're going crazy. Sheep are weird. They do weirdest noises ever. <laughs> anyway, those are what the noises. If you've been hearing bells and weird burp noises, it's the sheep. <laughs> anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video on Umbilicus rubestris, Venus's navel. As I said, I adore it. Um, if you do find it, definitely test it, taste it, or give me, you tell me about your experience. If you already know about Umbilicus rupestris, I'd love to know if you have any recipes to give, if you do cook it, I don't know. And if you do have any suggestions of plants you want me to make a video about, don't hesitate. But keep in mind that it has to grow in the Mediterranean because I live in Mallorca, in Spain, uh, so, you know, Mediterranean. <laughs> Anyway, I will say goodbye to you and I'll see you with the next plant. Goodbye.